Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be covering an overview of some of the things that you need to know and maybe learn before you get into proof of useful work in AI. So let's get right into it. So some of the things you're gonna to have to learn and the first subject we're gonna be covering is gonna be hardware. You guys are gonna to have to go on Google and research your hardware. I get tons of questions of, hey King, is this good? Is this good? Is that good? I don't even, I'm gonna be honest guys, I don't even answer those anymore because you guys need to do your own research and figure out what your goals are. Like if you guys want to run one GPU, you guys should probably run consumer grade hardware. If you wanna run two GPUs, I would say maybe look at some older Xeons, right? If you wanna run multiple GPUs, then you're gonna be talking about getting into epics and you're gonna be like, King, well, why are we going from consumer grade to Xeon to epics? Well, consumer grade typically has 20 to 24 lanes um, of PCIe lane connectivity. So that's why you're gonna be limited to one GPU at full 16. Now you can run it at reduced configuration, but to me, I feel like that's kind of a waste because you're not utilizing the GPU as much as you possibly can, which can also give you the most revenue possible, right? So I think that's just my perspective and everybody's gonna have their own opinion on this as well. So the Xeons typically, the older Xeons have about 40 lanes, which is why I said you could do two GPUs. And then if you wanna get multi GPUs like a four, six or eight card rig, you're definitely gonna to wanna to be in the epics because those have 128 lanes of connectivity. So it's more than enough to support 16 lanes per GPU, you know, for that particular platform. So moving forward, just what you guys need to do is, is when, you, when you're Googling your setup, just figure out what's gonna be your goal to start with. Do you want one GPU, two GPUs or multi GPUs? Obviously, the more GPUs you run, the more expensive the hardware is gonna be. So let's get into networking for a little bit and we're gonna be talking about what you need for your network in order for it to be, I would say, if you wanted to do this from home, right? Now, everybody's networking solution is gonna be completely different and, you know, it's really hard to say what everybody's, you know, you're gonna have a different skill level than me and I'm gonna run different equipment than you. There's so many different companies and manufacturers. There's mesh systems, there's, you know, the TP links and not, you know, uh, Nighthawks. And, you know, there's so many manufacturers that I, I, I don't know them all. And there isn't really a standard because they all kind of have their own operating system. But I mean, the fundamentals are all somewhat similar. Um, but to me, moving forward, if you're gonna get into this and do it from home, at least the two that I'm familiar with and that I can recommend to you guys is gonna be either Ubiquity or it will be Mikrotik, right? Um, I, I understand them both. So with that being said though, you guys are gonna learn how to do networking. You're gonna have to learn how to make VLANs. You're gonna have to learn how to route traffic. You're gonna have to learn how to create firewall rules. You're gonna have to learn an op how to open and close in ports. You're gonna have to learn how to um, stop your VLANs from cross communicating to each other. Um, because you, you, don't, you don't want the stuff on VAST to be able to ping outside of its network to you at your home network. And the reason for that is, is you, you're opening up your public IP to a port to let somebody come in and access and have SSH access, okay? They can use that port. They, as long as they know that IP address, they can also sniff to see if there's any other ports open in that range, okay? If there is any other vulnerabilities, they, they can be compromised. So running this from home can be somewhat dangerous. It can be, I'm not trying to like scare anybody like that, but I'm just saying is, is when you're doing this from home, you need to be careful. You don't want that, you don't want bass and mining stuff mingling over with what you do on a daily basis where you do like your emails, you do your, 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 your banking and you go on your Twitters and all that stuff. You wanna keep that stuff way separated that they don't even know that they exist, right? So if this is stuff that you're not comfortable with or you don't think that you could do or you don't even wanna learn it, right? I don't think AI or, or, or proof of useful work is for you, in my opinion. Um, because you do kind of have to be a network administrator when you are running this kind of stuff. You will have to learn some of these things. 
Um, the last thing, which is probably going to scare most people, and I know, and uh, which is going to be Linux. And I know Flux has brought out a Windows version of their proof of useful work, which which is really great. I do think it's great because it's going to include everyone. Um, but if everybody thinks about it, everything is ran in Linux, right? If you run, if you if you want to run a, a, a regular Flux node, it's, it's Linux. If you want to start a um, a node that you can mine to, like before uh, mining pools exist, like let's say you're mining a coin early on, you have to know Linux and how to compile the node, right? Um, if you want to run your own pool, you gotta you gotta learn Linux. If what do you think Team Red and all these other guys do? They're all it's all Linux. So if, if you guys really want to get into this, you guys need to start learning Linux and increase your Linux, you know, your Linux proficiency. And I know it's to, to some people, Linux is scary. It can be intimidating, but I'll just say this. What's the worst that you can do when you first learn how to use Linux? What you're going to, you're going to break it. I mean, I'll be honest, I just make a prox, I just have a Proxmox server, and when I first started learning all my Linux stuff, I screwed up a lot, right? You just delete the VM, you make a new one, you do it again. And then every time, every time you make a mistake, it's like a little check mark that's in your head, okay, I can't do that because of this reason, right? And you just, you just naturally learn as you go along down the route, right? Um, so you guys, I think everyone needs to make a point to learn Linux and not be so intimidated by it and not be afraid to make mistakes, right? Because what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to have to delete the VM and start over or delete the Linux and format your drive and put Linux back on. It's not that bad. It's like a five minute install. Um, these are some of the things I think people need to know and understand before they get into the AI or proof of useful work um, arena. Uh, moving forward, I think it's very important that you you understand all the hardware, you understand all the networking, you understand all of the Linux because you're going to have to wear these hats. You're going to have to wear the network administration hat. You're going to have to wear the system admin hat. How are you going to troubleshoot your rigs um, and stuff like that, right? I, I, I'm going to say running multi rigs. I'm going to say that Linux is going to be your best friend, not Windows. So in my opinion, these are just some of the things that people should know moving forward, right? Um, this is definitely not a get rich quick scheme. There's definitely a lot of work. All right, guys, this is Monique giving you the most hashes and I'll see you next time.